I'm Rachel Lynn for Queen Bee of Honeydews and I am inside today because it is so cold outside. I just finished yesterday building this crate which I'm using for my Christmas tree. It's going to serve as both a riser and later on it will be storage for some ornaments. So I'm just about ready to start adding some stamps to this crate to make it look like an authentic shipping crate but still Christmassy. But first let's go back and I'll show you how I built this crate. So I just start out by cutting down some 3 quarter inch plywood into the sizes that I need. For this project you'll need the following dimensions from the 3 quarter inch plywood. And you'll also need to make some trim pieces from some 1 by 3 boards. Next I'm going to lay out the four sections that will be the sides of the box. And I'm going to place a mark on the interior side along the edge that will be the bottom and along the left edge then using my pocket hole jig, I'm going to drill pocket holes down the entire length of both of the sides that I indicated in the previous step by making that mark. Repeat for all four sides of the shipping crate. Next, I'm transferring the height requirements for my riser to the side panels. Now, I'm not going into any specifics here on how high I'm doing this because it's going to vary from person to person and tree to tree. But you do need to look at your tree and make sure that the bottom branches have enough room to clear the top edge of the shipping crate. Next, I'm attaching the cleat strips using those guide marks that I just made to make sure that all of the cleats are straight and level with each other. And again, I'll do this for all four sides of the shipping crate. To assemble the crate, I'm going to take one panel and place the pocket hole side over the top of another panel that on the edge that does not have pocket holes. Then I'm going to insert one and one quarter inch pocket hole screws to attach this. And I'm going to repeat this for all four sides just by flipping the panels over and repeating the same action to the next side. And then by flipping again and adding the next panel in the same manner as I did previously. And then finally flipping the box one last time and aligning that last side panel to the interior of the one that it is going to attach to. And what you'll end up with are panels that are staggered so that the raw edge will show on one and the raw edge will be hidden on the other side. Let me pull this back a little bit so that you can see how they are staggered. One corner is exposed and one corner is hidden. So that was simple enough. And next I'm just going to add the bottom to this. It's a little difficult to do over this table, but so you can see what I'm doing, I'm just aligning it up and for ease, I'm going to just attach a few pocket holes from overhead and then I'm going to flip this box over on its side so that you can get a better angle to see what's going on with what I'm doing. And all I'm doing is just attaching one and one quarter inch pocket hole screws into the bottom edge to attach that bottom to it and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Then finally I get to start adding the trim. And now what I'm doing is I am first starting on the sides that I want to be the side of the crate. And I'm attaching that board first and making it flush with the front edge. And then I am coming back and I'm adding the front trim which will overlap the edge of the side trim piece. If you're using the measurements that I gave at the beginning of this video, then you will notice that the trim pieces will protrude over the top edge of the side panels by three quarters of an inch. This is intentional so that I can drop a lid down in place later on and use this crate for storage. After I get the front finished, I'm just going to flip this around and I'm going to repeat the exact same process for the back. Now, on these horizontal pieces, I actually measured those and marked them as I went and cut them. Put them in place this way because I wanted to get a really nice tight fit, so I don't have any specifics for these. But you do need to make sure you line that top edge up with the vertical piece so that these protrude above the side panels as well. 
Now I want to show you a couple different ways that you can apply stamps to your shipping crates. These are my printables and you can see that these particular ones are in red and I'm just going to show you this way it will work with a very light stain or with a unfinished or natural crate. These are laser printed and you can see that they are in reverse and I should note that this method must be done with a laser print. Now I'm just going to cut out the prints real quick and I want to point out that these prints that have really fine detailed uh, lettering on them, they're not going to work very well with this method so I'm not even going to bother to try that one. And this method is not really good if you plan to use any type of a coloring in your stain for your crate. If you look closely in the previous and in the next video clip you'll be able to barely see where I've done this because I'm actually using a dark stain. So if you plan to use anything other than a very light stain, you can go ahead and jump ahead to the next technique. So what I'm doing is I'm just pressing this with a hot iron and this will begin the process and will also hold the print in place for the next step. But this alone is not going to give a really nice good finish to this transfer. In addition, these printables are, are, were made to be distressed so the rough surface of the wood is just going to exaggerate that. Now once I see that the heat has begun to do its thing, I'm just going to take some acetone and very lightly put a coat of acetone over the back of this paper. And this is just regular laser paper and I'm going to press until that dries and acetone dries very quickly. I'm just going to take a peek and I'm going to keep going in areas where I can see that the uh, print hasn't transferred as well and I'm again I'm just going to rub until the acetone evaporates completely take another little peek add a little bit more you do not want to saturate the acetone on the paper heavy to begin with because if you do it can obliterate the print and you'll end up with blurry letters so just keep going at this with very light coats of acetone and checking and reapplying as needed. Now I'm going to lift this up so you can see how well it transfers these really thick fonts. And this again is distressed to start with. Now I'm going to do this other one which I would consider a more of a medium font. And let me speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to wait for this whole process to happen. So you can see that even a medium weight distressed font is going to transfer relatively decent with this method. Okay, so the crate was pretty easy to build and as you can see I've already stained it. The color that I used was Minwax Honey. I recommend that you use the lightest color of stain that you can tolerate if you're planning to add stamps to it because they will show up a lot better. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the stamps for a moment. Now, if you're really good at doing graphics, you can make your own, or you can go online and you can find some and you can download them for your own personal use. Now, if you're interested in getting the specific ones that I'm using today, these are my own design and they're available all over on my blog in my printable gallery. But I should point out that the printable gallery is available to anyone who signed up for my newsletter. So if you're interested in staying up to date on projects that I do, you can head on over to there and sign up. I'll leave a link for you below and once you're signed up you'll receive a password which will allow you to get into my printable gallery and there's almost a hundred printables in there. So anyone that's interested, links below. Any Avery label, sticky label paper you can use and what you have to do is this is actually the backing. So I save the backings from all of my Avery labels and I use them to do transfers. This I have found to be the best way to transfer a pattern to wood and again it's on the shiny part of the label like after you pull, pull the labels off the shiny part print on that side so the next thing you're going to need is some polycrylic this is satin water-based washes up with water you can get it at any of the big box stores and you're going to need something to apply it with like a paintbrush and you're also going to need some sort of a smoothing tool like an, a credit card or some sort of straight edge to smooth out the pattern. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you how to apply these stamps real quick. Okay, so I've already placed the two stamps that I used in the previous demonstration. But now I'm going to also do this one that I wouldn't use before with that other method. And you can see that the font and the lines are very distressed and it's a very tiny font. But we're going to give it a go and see if this works. I think it will. 
And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to place a layer of the polycrylic sealant onto the crate, get a nice thick coat, and then I'm just going to turn this over and press it down into it. Now try not to move it around that much once you actually get it pressed in there. It will begin to transfer uh, relatively soon, but you have a few minutes to work it. And I'm just using the top from my Craig box, but anything that you have that you can use to smooth this out, get all the bubbles out, you can use a credit card or whatever, but you do want to get the bubbles out of this and make sure that everything is adhered firmly into that sealant and watch it after a few minutes because sometimes the moisture will cause more bubbles to appear and you need to smooth those out. Now I'm just going to remove that excess sealant off of the crate because we don't want to have any blobs of sealant showing later on. And then I'm just going to let this set and dry for, but, uh, depending on the temperature, 30 minutes to an hour. And now it's dry and I'm going to remove this first one to see how it did and it's transferring fairly decent. It's very distressed, but again, that's the way the print is. And it's not as well as I would have liked, but it looks, looks distressed and I think it looks nice still. But let's see this other one. You can see this comes off really well on this. And I did print these in black instead of in the red that the printable is made in. Um, you can do that just by selecting grayscale on your printer before you print anything out. But the original is in red and I did that for people who want to use it for other things. So I think this all looks pretty good. And now that I have done that, I'm going to come back and I'm just going to apply a coat of the polycrylic over the entire thing to make everything look as though it blends together and to protect this crate later on. But for now, let's just jump ahead to the future and see what this turned out like. Okay folks, so now I'm going to get my Christmas tree out and get it put together and put it in this box and get it decorated and I'll show you what that looks like. But stay tuned because I'm going to show you how I take an unlit Christmas tree and add some permanent lights to it. 